Hello, hi, this is Roger Castillo. This uh, investigation and filming on how the drought would affect our river system and comparing from the last previous droughts that occurred in the year of 1987 through 1993. Collating that information and explaining that even in this extreme drought, some very remarkable things have occurred. Having the time to prove my theories and walking underneath many of the storm drains through many of the cities to share where animals could utilize flows from seismic activity or water that is breaking through storm drains or from dewatering or pumping facilities contributing to other fish populations. According to you, on the flows returning to the Coyote Creek system, we are at Singleton Road. Uh, my companion Zoe, uh, as you can see, there are some flows coming back to Singleton. The water at the below the reservoir, Anderson, is at about 168 CFS. But we only got about one or two CFS reaching here yet. Started about two days ago. The Remindy arrived here probably a couple of days ago. Have birds already hunting in the area. But uh, again, it took a few days for the water to replenish the aquifer of the Coyote Creek. And uh, Zoe and I are out taking a, a look to see uh, what the conditions look like. The larger fish are the first to arrive and the, carp and the fry right are right behind them. This is a look at Coyote Creek watershed and how it functions after recovering out of an extreme drought. Within the Metcalf Five Pond system. As the reservoirs were burped, the fish ladder started to be functional again and the remarkable thing on how and where fish were reared. But investigating one of the ponds, I noticed that no fish were making it up the fish ladder. And the creek was dry for almost two years. So this is a small portion of my complaint on how Santa Clara Valley Water District operates and fails to manage their five ponds within the Metcalf area on Coyote Creek. As ponds again fill a total of five ponds in the Metcalf area, this is one pond that has a levee break in it and you could see this valve system that plunges in the middle of the pond. What you're about to observe is within the April time frame this large migration of fish leaving the state-of-the-art sewage treatment plant and millions if not thousands of hundreds of thousands fish started showing up in humongously large schools. Having the opportunity to set up cameras, underwater cameras, at the plunge of this valve system and filming as the fish attempt to move into this pond. The obvious signs on how a plunging valve system can confuse fish thinking there's a way out and how this would threaten endangered steelhead rainbow trout or out migrating steelhead out-migrating salmon. Finding some of the casualties which look like native minnow populations throwing themselves against the rocks. Having the opportunity I pulled out a Ziploc bag, plastic bag, out of my backpack and plunged it below this group of rocks from this valve system and all these fish ended up in the bag. Black bass, minnow species, carp, suckerfish, 
there was so many different species that congregated within this valve system attempting to move upstream. Having the opportunity to not just film but understand behavior on how fish are drawn to plunging waters confused from trying to find the exit. While these are invasive species, the effects to the natives are really extremely bad as they get trapped in these ponds and they get preyed upon. Here's a look during the drought 2014 how this pond you could observe the levee breach. This would be where the fish have to enter and at the same time the drying pools and animals that I rescued like floater mussels there's the breach that's where the fish come into the pond and then are confused with the plunging flows. Having the opportunity to angle lower areas from the pond area, an infestation I determined was established throughout the whole coyote watershed. It's a lot of little bass activity. Nothing but bass. And these are all largemouth bass. Oh, here we go. Oh, little guy. Woo, little, little uh, three-incher here. Look at the. This is a small look. Numerous fishing expeditions, filming numerous people hiding the secret of where millions of fish are trapped within a pond. To the point that even while I was fishing, my dog swam around and I'm catching fish. This is just a small look. Having the opportunity to fish and invite Herman Garcia from Cheer to come on a 30 minute fishing expedition. All right, so I'm here with Herman Garcia. We're gonna do some angling. Millions of, millions of fish. Oh, oh, millions of fish swam up from the north end of San Jose where all the water is coming up from a lot of the seismic activity also where the fish are living under storm drains but today is an angling day millions of fish are trapped here at the I call it pond 3 downstream of Metcalf pond and look at this during the drought this pond is full of millions of largemouth bass a bass fisherman's paradise Here we go. Catch and release. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's how quickly, within 30 seconds, you can catch a largemouth bass here at the Metcalf Ponds. And again, they swam up from lower reaches, from the estuaries, downtown San Jose, North End. All of our creeks have these fish in them right now, including downtown San Jose. The obvious signs of observing the large rookeries that were reestablished. These cormorants in the hundreds were now sleeping around the pond in the trees during the evenings, hunting in packs. Growing up as a child and experiencing three droughts and and filming the migrations of salmon and learning and being one of the experts on our local watersheds. These next films will explain more. Growing up on the urban streams in Santa Clara County and rescuing many animals and following and filming many animals, understanding the urban condition and how animals survive droughts and where a lot of the water is coming from. And then having the opportunity to walk underneath cities and finding tens of hundreds of thousands of fish, many variety and many species, and investigating how the fish survive the drought conditions when streams 
go completely dry. But one of the most important things to show is that how Chinook salmon enter with these flows and actually can be found holding outside of these storm drains and steelhead rainbow trout are entering these conditions to thrive. In these next film clips, a lot of it has to do with the seismic flows that you've just seen and where fish are holding in lower areas when sections of the river system are completely dry. Also, how it caters to these invasive species, but not far behind, how each passing storm allows fish movement and also numerous fish kills. During the drought, receiving calls on fish kills in the downtown areas of San Jose and having the opportunity to film Santa Clara Valley Water District picking up fish. How many native fish population might have been Breathing. eradicated from the you effects of blocked. the city flash discharging to the downtown areas? Looking at the higher watershed of the Guadalupe River on Alamitos Creek is another example of how housing complexes affect the streams. Here are more examples. While these carp species like California suckerfish are urged to move up from the effects of housing complexes releasing flash discharge, they are more smarter and know when the flows are coming down, they immediately turn back. In other instances, this one storm drain is affiliated with a spring. So many fish enter this storm drain are actually spawning inside the storm drain. Unfortunately, the steelhead rainbow trout have a different type of behavior where they are urged to keep moving forward. And instead of turning back the other way, they actually will hold in the pond and actually end up expiring. So a part of my other major complaint is Santa Clara Valley Water District keeps insisting that they do not need to know how much water is coming from storm drains, which not only affects migration and the take of an endangered animal, Monitoring and following the fish kills, also monitoring Santa Clara Valley Water District's operations, not understanding why they can't stay in compliance to permits to keep fish ladders in operation. After 10 to 12 storms coming in through the, the fall of 2015 and not understanding why things were not assembled. Most certainly millions of fish died not just on the Coyote Creek but the Guadalupe River system. In assessing more about the effects of the drought my assumption was that most of the invasive species like largemouth bass or black bass, carp, and perch, bluegill, would be no longer in high concentrations, but that, that is not the case. Within the spring of 2016, it almost looked like we never even had a drought. Fish could be found in the downtown areas, large fish, and then the fish just moved on up to the upper watershed. On this next fishing expedition, after observing at least five to six fish kills with yeah, passing storms. Panfish. Oh wow, look at this one. She is fat. Most likely has uh, eggs in her. Look at the beautiful colors. These are uh, beautifully looking uh, panfish. They're like a bluegill species. And uh, they got a large mouth compared to the uh, other species that we see that are non-native here. To go into more detail on how gross negligence the water district 
and how they conducted operation. This is Kirk Dam diversion to their percolation system on Los Gatos Creek. This region is four to five miles upstream of the downtown San Jose area. Within the downtown area of Azurea Street Bridge crossing where where the flows diminish just around the Lincoln gauge to 0.5 CFS. Standing on a rock in the middle of the channel and filming the conditions. In the November 6, 2016 time frame, raising flows on the main river of the Guadalupe River and reducing the flows on Los Gatos Creek and stranding Chinook and watching Chinook turn around as flows diminish in between storms. The gauge at the Lincoln gauge will show this information. Also, how the water district continues to disregard this pumping facility underneath the Azureus Bridge, which contributes to stranding fish within the downtown area. As to what occurred in 2013, as many fish got trapped within the same region from the effects of this storm drain dewatering facilities along the freeway. Many fish solely have the discharge of storm drains to allow them to move upstream. Meanwhile, the water district reduced the flows that these fish had no other choice but to turn around and go back downstream. So the other factor is trapping fish within the most heavily homeless infested areas within the downtown areas of San Jose. A quick look at the conditions in 2013. In the monitoring and staff at the Santa Clara Valley Water District, senior managers making it a high priority that they make sure that they do not report the most appalling conditions from the traps to the poaching activity that the homeless had been conducting for decades. Looking at the shovel and the pallet, you'll see the screens that we found in the creek once the evictions were completed. But the most important thing is that identifying that staff had been following Chinook salmon and documenting reds and failed to report stream alterations and the take of a threatened or endangered species. The damage is overwhelming on how hoard the conditions were in 2013.